What's up, Rockstars? Today I'm gonna to be unboxing something that's as old as I am. This is gonna be super, super duper cool. Um, really excited for it. Let's dive in. All right, now this is gonna be a lot different than anything I've unboxed before, which just always excites me. I like it when this is something new and different and unique. Um, this was sent to me by one of my awesome viewers like you. You guys are so awesome. I feel incredibly lucky to be in the same community as you guys. Uh, it's definitely an honor. Uh, you guys are all just really, really cool people. And I always enjoy chatting with you and sh you know just sharing this passion of ours. I think it's awesome. Um, anyway, so I was told, by the way, this, I mean, you, you know, because I don't hide crap on the, I, I, I tell you exactly what it is I'm going to be doing. So I'm unboxing the Hero Quest, the original Hero Quest, and I was told this is no different than if I got it from a thrift store. I'm going to get the full experience of a super old game. So excited for that. <laughs> Should be good. All right, let's see what we got here. Some padding here. Again, this is just his. Wow, look at this. this is nice packaging, dude. Well done. Look at that. Look at that. All right. Okay. Over here. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's so heavy. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's uh dive into this. All right, let's see how to open this. Looks like you taped it here. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be this excited about this, but I'm really interested to look into this because I'm so used to modern games. I'm a, I'm a, I only found out about board games because some coworkers were playing a uh, Zombicide and uh, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And so what I ended up doing because I still didn't really get into gaming. Like, I played it with them, and it was cool. I'm playing Zombicide. This is season one, by the way. Uh, no, two, it was this, the uh, prison. Anyway, um, that was kind of my introduction to modern board gaming. And I was like, wow, things get better than Monopoly in life. So who knew? Um, but I still didn't get my own until I play a lot of Magic the Gathering off and on. Kind of a love-hate relationship. And I, uh... Whoop, Got a card worth 200 bucks, and it was only worth 200 bucks if I got in-store credit at the, the game store. So I'm like, okay, all right, well, I've been playing these board games or whatever. I need to look to see what I get. I ended up getting Descent 2nd Edition, plus the uh, uh, Dragon expansion and a few other packs and stuff like that. And uh, the rest is history. Now I run a YouTube channel on this. Sorry, I'm trying to be as careful as I can here. I could just really slice into it, but I would hate to... The damage is more than it probably already is, so had to bear with me and hear a story. Uh, but anyway, I've never experienced a game like Hero Quest before, um, so this should be good. Oh my goodness! All right. Ugh. Oh, it's a Hero Quest game system. All right, this is fun. Let's see here. Okay. Wow. Shoot, I think I've had a uh, old like Monopoly sets from 1997 that are in worse condition than this. This isn't actually too bad. I do like the <laughs> the tape here to keep it to keep it closed. I like it. That's smart. I'm going to slide that off. Actually, I don't know what kind of stuff this is, but better packaging than I I do. That's for sure. This is nice. Let's only slide the other one the other way. Okay, um, I think the bard is right and that this art is fantastic. He knew what he was talking about. Of course the bard knew what he was talking about. Um, the best thing about Hero Quest is definitely the art. All right, so here is High Adventure in a World of Magic. Ages 10 to adult, no nine-year-olds, two to five players by Milton Bradley. Uh, it's interesting, they call it a game system. Not like a board game, it's a game system. Interesting. I wonder why they chose that. Um, I guess because you could use it with multiple things, I don't know. Let's see, we got some green people. We got Frankenstein, 
We got Skeletor. Um, we got uh, Shovel Knight. We got Conan. Uh, we got Gimli. <laughs> um, just regular orcs, and then uh, I don't know a Highlander. Why don't we go with that? A Magic Highlander. Um, I'm gonna carefully flip this to the back. Because I want. Oh, do you hear that? This is gonna be. You know what? I'll open it first. I, don't, I would hate to like really, really ruin things. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh, look at this! Look at this! Okay, so inside we have assembly instructions. Look at that! They came multi-piece. That is cool. And I will say, I will say, I was commenting about the glue to see how it's kind of coming apart here and all that. And a lot of that has to do, I feel, with dust getting in there and all that. And it just kind of, like, these are the weak points, as you can tell. So a good glue job right in the corner there, I think, is going to help with that. Okay, hero quest, assembly instructions. Carefully twist the 31 monster figures and the four hero figures from their plastic runners and put them to one side. These came out plastic runners, that's so cool. I had no idea, that's awesome. Twist the gargoyle's wings and head from the gray plastic runner and assembly is shown, I just twist them right off, huh? <laughs> There's a gargoyle, fit the wings into the hole in the back and fit the head onto the neck. Oh, is that where the head goes? It goes on the neck, guys, in case you didn't know. Uh, twist the 21 door bases from my, this came with so much stuff. 16, five closed doors and 16 open doors. For sets four through 13, use the illustrations on the cardboard platform as a parts guide. Okay, so here you had the bookshelf and the fireplace and like the, the, the counter kind of thing, the alchemist bench. Okay, a sorcerer's table, a tomb. This came with uh, levers and stuff like that. Look at this. That is cool, a throne. Uh, like a bench table kind of thing. Skulls. Cardboard components from the sheet and twist the weapons rack from the brown plastic runner. Copyright 1989 and 1990 Milton Bradley. That is so cool. Wow, I had no idea they were selling stuff like this back then. What was I doing playing Monopoly? My parents didn't love me, that's what it is. That's pretty obvious. Okay, look at that. The instruction booklet comes in like this really cool sepia colored thing. Um, super awesome there. That is just cool. <laughs> that is hideous. Um, okay, so we got a brief introduction. What makes Hero Quest unique? Uh, contents assembly getting started. This is a table of contents. Zargon, the evil sorcerer's turn. Uh, <laughs> dead heroes, what happens between quests? I wonder, would it have an index? I bet not. Instead, it has an FAQ. What happens if the if we run out of monsters? Uh, okay, dead heroes. That's kind of cool. What happens between quests? Nope. So no index. Uh, we do have illustrations though, which is kind of cool. I dig that. Got the sheets. Got how to springing a pit trap. Secret door tile. Here's some more instructions. That is so nice to have. Not bad at all. I dig it. I love the the art for like the wood, the elf and stuff like that. That's cool. Our players have got little call out boxes here. Um, hints. Not a whole lot of use of necessarily color, but uh, the call out boxes are nice. Uh, instructions are nice. Very fancy kind of stuff here. Wow. Getting started. Choose your role. What makes your request unique? Okay, I'm actually going to read this little part because I'm curious. One player assumes the role of Zargon, the evil sorcerer and controller of the game. The other players assume the roles of the heroes, the barbarian, the dwarf, the elf, and the wizard. I love one versus all games. I don't think you can ever make an AI that matches what I could do as the enemies. I always enjoy playing that because I can customize it. I've played, like I said, I started with Descent, and I, my daughter at the time, my, my main gaming daughter, she's 11 now. But the time she was like nine or eight or something like that. And I would purposely pick like zombies, you know, they're slow and lumbering just so that she could, and I'd even leave one there so she could get a kill because she felt so good when she got a kill. And uh, I'd challenge an app to be able to customize based off of your eight-year-old daughter and what you're trying to do for her. Uh, moving on, a game for two to five players. Hero Quest is played in 14 sequential game playing sessions called Quests. Each quest is described in detail in the quest book. One quest may take an hour or two to play, with each subsequent quest increasing in difficulty. 
During a quest, a hero may acquire valuable treasures. These riches may be used between quests to purchase powerful weapons and protective armor from the armory. The heroes work together to defeat Zargon and his forces of chaos. Individual winning is not the goal. United, the heroes stand divided, they fall. And the adventure never ends. Additional quests featuring all new challenges for the heroes are available in the quest pack sold separately in your smartphone. No, I'm kidding. Um, that is super cool that what made it unique is that it's the one versus many genre. Um, and that it had a campaign and stuff like that. It's I think it's really cool that, uh, the, you know, this kind of started it all. And it, it's like, hey, look how unique. This. Of course, it's not unique at all now. So here. Oh, gosh, look at this. Oh, that is awesome. Wow. Love it. The gargoyle front and center there. You got the mummy and the cyclops and some skeletons and zombies and orcs and uh, other evil guys. And that's uh, just great. I love that. That is cool. And then you have, this is kind of like your, um, it's like a DM sheet, right? But it's a lot like your reminder card, right? Where it's, hey, here's how the, you know, the different things work and what you can do in a combat summary. And then you actually have all your stats there that you would need uh, for everything except uh, illustration of Chaos Warlock. Okay, whatever that person is. Uh, super cool there. I like that. Let's put that to the side. And the quest book. It's funny. Look, look. It's a weird way to, okay, so it's like this. Um, it, it's funny how non-standard sized compared to now these are. Um, and again, it's uh, some uh, lore and stuff like that here. And we got quest one of the trial. I'm sure this probably brings back a lot of memories for you guys. Dark shaded areas on all quest maps are considered solid rock. They're just solid rock everywhere. And then, and then you start here. Shows where they start and the layout. And it's all unique there. And then notes about if the treasure chest is empty and stuff like that. Wow, this is it, it's a lot closer to uh, like a D and D style kind of thing, um, which is really cool. This treasure chest has a trap with a poison needle, and oh my gosh, I'm spoiling things. Look at all of these though. Like there's a ton. I really dig that. What's there on the back there? What is this? The monsters. A little bit about each monster. So you got goblins and chaos warriors. Again, this was a uh, warhammer. Uh, mummies, orcs, skeletons, gargoyles. Chaos Warlock, Zombies, and uh, Femir. Very, very cool idea. Design your own quest adventures where you could mark it based off all the different markings and they had a little blank spot there for you. Just the one, but I'm sure you could do more. That is cool. And then you have a different style um, drawing of it. Uh, I really like that. Okay. Moving on, we have some dust and dirt and God only knows what. Okay, so on the back, again, just basic kind of cardboard here. Very flimsy here. This is the Armory Identification Guide. Black and white illustrations are quest book symbol references. Um, okay, so you can kind of see uh, this is that, this is that. Um, kind of cool. And then this is like where you'd buy stuff with the looks of it. So a chainmail costs 500 gold coins and a long sword costs 350 gold coins. Or you could maybe, if you don't want the long sword, get the crossbow for 360. 350 gold coins, but the wizard can't be equipping the wizard with a crossbow or a long sword. Sucks to be him. <laughs> Plate mail, 850. Wow. Toolkit. Disarms traps. That's super cool. I love the... I would love a game to treat its art kind of like this. Like, I really, really dig just... Uh, the It just oozes more theme than I ever thought it would be. Now, this does looks kind of custom. I don't think it came with this. Cleric spells. This is what somebody has done, um, which is actually super cool. I wonder how old this is. Very thin paper. <laughs> uh, the cleric is unique from the other standard heroes in that she has special abilities when fighting the undead. Is this a custom female cleric? That's cool. Well, look at that. I got a special deal here. Okay. And uh, let's see if I can dump this nicely. A little bit. Look at all that! Speed Racer! <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, we're gonna move Speed Racer and company to the side a little bit. And we are going to, it looks like it's just one fold. Doesn't fold into four. Let's see if I have enough room for that. Burr, burr, burr. Here is, oh, upside down. My goodness. Silly me. What was I thinking? Hero Quest. Here are kind of the different slots where you would have rooms and then just kind of have a various stuff just kind of look and I'm guessing hallways and you would add the doors to go into it. Um, a very interesting way to make a customizable map in my opinion uh, because it is like 
there's a room here and a room here and a room here. But then the ones that are open and how they're open kind of change it. So it's it's kind of the same, but then kind of not, which I think is kind of cool. And again, this artwork on the bottom here, like with the um, the kind of inlaid symbols on here, the wrappings around the swords and stuff. Very, very fancy. I really like that. However, it do, this art here seems a little odd to me. It, it just doesn't, like, uh, because I've been seeing stuff like this, and I've been seeing stuff like this, right? And then to me, this looks digital, right? This looks like a digital art. And I, I, I noticed that in, a, in several games even these days where... Like, the character art doesn't match the rest of the art in that game, right? Or, like, you can tell something's hand-drawn and then something's just digitally placed there. Now, I don't know necessarily if this was or not. I do like the little scatter stuff that you're kind of seeing just in different areas, which is super cool. But, um, it, it, either way, this seems a little odd to me. It doesn't quite feel the same, and I don't know why. Um, I, I, again, it could, maybe it's digital. I don't know if they did digital back then. I don't know how necessarily they drew this. It just seems a little different to me. But... Either way, pretty cool. And I don't know why they did the different colors either. I'm excited to look into this other one though. Okay, so again, this is kind of, again, where it's like, hey, you're gonna get that full, you grabbed it out of a, a thrift store experience, so it's just gonna have random stuff here. So we have a Speed Racer. <laughs> By the light, I am awesome. That's a great drawing. That is awesome. I love this guy. This guy needs to be in, in a board game. I dig that. It's got Sephiroth's hair. Um, I like his bangs. That's great. M. I wonder what M stood for. I love, the, like, he's kind of, like, his face is, you know, has some detail, and then his body's kind of eh, and then, like, they put some detail into that weapon, which has a either an M or a W. W for weapon. I don't know. Uh, that's fun. <laughs> uh, obviously, that doesn't normally come with it. Here's a character sheet. Name, nothing. Character dwarf. Two tight dice, two defend dice, starting point seven body, mind three. Oh, only mind three. 35 coins, potions, and other arms, body po points. And we got a few others here. I don't necessarily want to like spoil anything, but then look, even to this day, do you see how cheap? I mean, you can print a ton of these. So, like, even to this day, there's still more here. And of course, you could photocopy it and stuff like that, but um, this kind of stuff is not hard to do. You can print some of those pretty darn easily, I feel. Okay. Um, let's see here. We got some like, character cards here. Take a look at this. You are the barbarian, the greatest warrior of all, but beware of magic, for your sword is no defense against it. Neither is your skin, probably. <laughs> you got the elf, and the dwarf, and the wizard. Very, very cool. You got some movement. Uh, it's roll to move, which is Unfortunate, but that's all right. Starting weapon, the broadsword. The best thing about Hero Quest is the broadsword. 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 Uh, starting armor is none, <laughs> obviously. Uh, starting armor none. Starting armor none. Starting armor none. Uh, none of them start with armor. Maybe the cleric does. <laughs> attack dice three, two, two, and one. So definitely rolling all those attack dice, and then defense is the same on all of them. Uh, either way, this is this is neat. Oh, look at this! And then on the back, you kind of have a, you know, here's here's how you can do different things like attack or cast a spell, but only if you're a wizard and elf. Uh, search for treasure, search for secret doors and traps and whatnot. Uh, super cool. And again, I love the art. All right, let's see. Now we got this. What is this? Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> Dragon Strike game. This is different. I don't think this is part of it. <laughs> what the heck is this? <laughs> what am I looking at here? I don't know what this is. <laughs> we got the elf. <laughs> and, the, and the wizard. And the dwarf. <laughs> and the thief. This is great. And the female thief and the warrior. Oh, look at him. Wow. He is, uh, <laughs> okay. I don't know what this is, but that's, <laughs> I like the art in Hero Quest much more. Um, this is sweet art though. I should dig this. I love his red eyes. I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is somehow related. 
Um, I literally wouldn't know Dragon Man TSR. I don't think so. I don't think it's related at all. But it looks super cool. Look at that. I got a, I got a separate game here. I don't have to read this. Look at this. Dragon Strike Game Adventures. I like how they're definitely doing kind of the Dragon Quest kind of, you know. I, it's funny how each, so many things use dragon, right? There's Dungeons and Dragons and Inherent Seal. This is interesting. Okay. All right. I don't know what this is. <laughs> Moving that aside. Um, a little bit of a bowed thing here. Oh, look at these dice. These are cool. Okay. So again, uh, the, there might be some custom stuff here. Heck if I know. Um, this is kind of, if you're going to get hero quest nowadays, it's probably what you get anyways. Kind of a random, I love the gold and red. That looks sweet. That looks nice. They're nice and rounded and they're made out of wood. They're not too heavy. They, they have a good bounce. These are fun to roll. I don't know what I just rolled, but that is nice. I dig that. Uh, a lot of skulls. I'm assuming that's probably not good. So we got, um, and even to this day, like these aren't really scratched or anything like that. Like they, they're showing up pretty good. They're actually um, pretty good detail here. Uh, I really dig this. Um, now that we're looking at some smaller stuff, let's zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so it looks like you have one, two, three skulls. And again, they're all in a clump here. I, I typically don't like when dice are like that just because I feel like it's easier to kind of get hit. And then you have this kind of black symbol here and then two of these. I'm assuming this is defense and attack. And then I don't know what this is, probably bad by the looks of it, especially with it being black. Um, so that's, that's, that's my assumption if I was to guess. I don't even know what's coming out of this. <laughs> All sorts of food and who knows what. Um, these are, I like the look of these. They're, they're kind of smaller, but they feel really good. Like really, really good. Part of it's just based on how rounded they are, but um, the weight of them is pretty good too. Now this is not good. So one of the things, if you get wood, is they can break. Look at that. Wow, man, somebody's rolling dice hard. I've, I'm, I've been, I've rolled dice, but I've never, apparently I've not lived before if I've rolled dice that break them like that. Okay, what we got here? We got some, some treasure. Uh, it, very, very pretty. Got almost like a purple reddish hue here, and then all sorts of gems and stuff like that. Um, they're actually not terribly bent, so if you fold them over there, um, they're actually pretty darn good. Look at that. It's not bad at all for how old this is. Um, see how skinny one is. Oh, hazard. Um, a decent size. Um, not sealed around. Love the art. We got hazards and gold and heroic brew. More hazards, but different kinds of hazards, which is interesting. Wandering monster. Oh, that's not good. That's no good. There's a lot of bad things in here too. Um, gold and gems and stuff like that. And then even some like flavor tests. Again, very kind of RPG like here. Um, I would have loved this as a kid. I can tell you that much right now. This is incredible. Like I would have loved this. As somebody who's never experienced this, I think it's really cool. Okay, wow, what is all of this? My goodness. All right. More cards. We'll get to the minis. Don't worry. We'll get there. Um, and again... <laughs> Again, um, these actually look like they've, they've taken the test of time pretty darn well. <laughs> okay. Um, and again, I don't know necessarily. Yeah, they're not really, they're not really bad at all. I like these. Death Knight. Gargoyle. Bugbear. A uh, giant, a fire elemental, a fly. Oh, wait a second. Now, a lot of these, I think this may be the other game. This might not be Hero Quest. And the reason I say that is this because Crystal Ball, Wizard Only, maybe, maybe something. I don't know what's going on here. Levitate. Because, like, oh, fly. I was thinking fly is in, like, a, an enemy fly. Do they have all these? Do they have a bugbear in here? I don't think so. An eight foot tall brute likes to attack with blunt axe. Most bugbears are as dumb as posts, but they can talk. They can talk. <laughs> I don't play Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know. Dwarf only. No, this looks like it's probably, probably right. Invisibility, second level. These are like different spells and stuff you can have and different items. So here's your shield, first level. Okay, no, so this is. Because I asked, because on the back here, reference, you're a thief. Thief actions, warrior. Let's see, thief wasn't an option. Dwarf, wizard. 
Thief only sneak attack. The art here, again, is much different, right? Trap here. Spear trap. Like, the <laughs> these, are, these are really funny. Really funny. Uh, treasure. Yeah, this is different. I don't know what I'm looking at here. This is so funny. I don't know what to say. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. Look at this. Okay. I like this. They got a dragon and you got an orc. Look how well put. These are all painted and everything. A fire elemental. Oh my gosh. A giant. An evil wizard. <laughs> a man scorpion. Oh no, not a man scorpion. A troll. There's a bugbear. A gargoyle. And a death knight. Yeah. So this is different. I don't know what this is, but that's... That's that's funny stuff. Again, definitely Hero Quest has this kind of art, so that's that's definitely different. Okay, now I think we can start looking at some of this. So we have a ton, a ton of these, like little. What is what is this? Hold on a second. I found more stuff. Oh look at that! That looks so cool. Okay, all right, all right. And all the cards. Okay, I think we have all the cards now. Looks like we do. Look at this. That is so cool. This reminds me of like really old magic cards that I get. Um, and I, yeah, here's the Oric and Femur. Much different. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I was looking at there. <laughs> uh, I love it. So this is what I would use when I was painting them. This is how I would match the art and everything like that. Super, super cool. I dig that. Love it. I love that there's actually like a little train around him and everything. It's like a whole little scene. So he's got like bats flying around and everything. Love it. That is cool art too. And then we have spells. Here are the spells. We've got water spells. Look at the art on that. It's so awesome. Air spells. Fire spells. Some artifacts. A chaos spell. Ooh, those are bad. And an earth spell. Let's put earth after the other elements. Okay. Take a look on the other side here. Uh, again, the black and white. But this is so cool. I love... Th Not only that, but it looks like, a, like with this, all the art is unique. Which is really nice. That I'm, As far as I can tell, it looks like they're all unique. Which is actually a lot of work to have somebody do all of this, you know? Love it. That's cool. And again, you get the um, the lore kind of description. It's like in 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 game description. It's not breaking the the immersion at all. Okay, now I'm seeing these little things, and I don't know are these the skulls that you can put on? It looks like they may have just been little bits by the looks of it. Yeah, they're just little bits. And we have different. Uh, here's what air and fire, perhaps, and then. Uh, different maybe objective tokens that you can grab by the looks of it, perhaps. Um, here's like the door. So here's a closed door, and then you have the open door. They come in these little like kind of plastic ABS stands by the looks of it. Um, that's super cool. And then I don't know, it looks like you have these doors here, and I don't know the difference. I don't know why these, like they, they're themed different too, and they're square. Um, then we have these standees here to hold stuff. I don't know what it's supposed to hold. I'm just kind of digging through here. It's, I mean, it's it's kind of a mess, but it's to be expected. Uh, invisible. Okay, I was like, what the heck? <laughs> it's like Raymond. Um, there's invisible there, and this is in air. You can barely read the red text on there, which is funny. So there's an in air and not in air. Uh, here's some, oh gosh, darkness and a chest. And like a bullseye and charmed. Okay, here's a pit. This is such a like. It reminds me a lot of Descent, right? Where it's like this um, RPG Dungeons and Dragons style experience in a board game. Just super cool. Web, a ton of different things, and I'm assuming there were rules for each one. Uh, if we go back to the campaign thing, you could see that. Um, Here's like a, a an ox car driven cart it looks like or not an ox but you know horse driven wagon thing. Um, super cool. Here's a little cave entrance there. We saw that symbol earlier. I kind of pointed it out. Some kind of something or other. Look at some of this. 
This is cool. So you get like a little rat up there and a skull. Uh, the rat is bigger than the skull, so it's definitely not to scale. Um, but you get these double doors there. And again, it's even 3D. It's got the side there as well. I'm assuming there's probably something on the bottom you can put there. Um, here's the, the table. So what they did is they put some of it as plastic, but then the rest is just this cardboard that just kind of fits in there. Oh, let's see, that's a table. This is a cupboard. That's what that is. And then let's see, do we have anything? Oh, look at this. Look at this. This is the alchemist bench. So it's labeled in there, which is actually kind of nice. You can see where the skull pokes in there. And then again, you have the, uh, the rat, which isn't stuck all the way in. I'll get in there, rat. There we go. Um, so, so lots of rats everywhere. Um, the, the little writing on here. So this is like cool painted. I dig it. Uh, it's, it's a little unfortunate. It's not all plastic. That's all right. Here's a bookcase. Again, we got the rat there and you can kind of customize, I guess, even where the rat is kind of positioned, which is kind of nice. In fact, you can put the rat over here. Uh, very cool. Very cool. And this is actually like really, you see how sturdy this cardboard is, by the way, like it's starting to fray here, but it's nice and thick and firm. Oh, it's firm. <laughs> There's a guy in there. But still, like it's it's really solid, actually. I'm actually kind of impressed with that. Um, okay, here's oh, oh this is the, the lever thing. Do these actually work? They must, because this is like tilted the other way. Oh no, maybe it's supposed to be like this, that's why. <laughs> okay, so it's probably supposed to be like that. Um, yeah, definitely uh, not a fun place to be on that. That's almost all plastic. Some of this is a lot more plastic than look at that. Very cool, kind of like a coffin, sarcophagus, kind of a tomb. That's the tomb there. Another table here. We got, what is this? This is the, uh-oh, uh-oh. Don't know, an altar of some kind. Look at the writing there. That would look so cool painted. I did that with a little can, oh, a little bit candle. Um, the candle sticks there, looks like the tip actually broke off of that one. Uh, another plastic piece. What is this? Some oh, this is the fireplace. Wonder it's a fire. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Put the fireplace back up. See how this works. Again, shoving the cardboard in there is going to be the scary part, right? Oh, it looks like it fits in nicely, actually. So that's good. Even on the back, it's not like plain cardboard. So even if you're sitting on the other side of the table, it looks like something at least. It'd be nice if it was double printed, but oh well. Um, super cool. Super cool. Put that in the camera. Uh, I love that. I don't think any of this is to scale, right? That chest is going to be really tiny, I feel. And maybe it's a tiny chest. I don't know. But, like, I feel... Let's see if we put a person there. Uh, that's actually huge, right? I mean, that's a, fi a fireplace going up to your chest. Which maybe works. Okay, looks like that's it for terrain. Oh, no, no. We got a weapon rack here, which, again, is just twisted off. Super cool. I love the the texture on the shields and everything. You can tell Games Workshop was involved with this. It's actually quite nice. All the plastic is actually pretty sturdy. Um, this has got bent, but it'll bend right back, which is kind of nice. Look at that, fixed. There you go. <laughs> and there's actually a few, there's a ton of little, like, like I have a whole collection here of all this little kind of furniture and different interaction points and objective things and whatnot. Um, don't know what this is. All right, let's look at some of these menus. Look at this guy here. Looks like his wing fell off a little bit. So it should probably be right in there like that. We can glue that back on. Uh, so very um, flat on the Z plane. That's why, or on the you know Y plane or X plane, or whatever plane this is. Either way, where they're printing it, where it's kind of lined up. That's why his arms happen to be lined up with him. But they make it work, actually. Um, it's pretty good. It's got texture everywhere, which is nice. Um, you know. Uh, all of his fingers are sculpted and everything. Looking at, where's my pokey stick? Where'd it go, guys? Here it is, found it, don't worry. Okay, we're gonna zoom in a little bit here. Hey, babe. That's, that's loud. Oh, sorry, I'll do it later. That's okay. Uh, so he's got all of his teeth. He's even got a little eye. His eyes actually sculpted as well. It's teeny tiny, but it's there. His nostrils are there. Um... The base is kind of weird, and then it's like, do, do, do you see how it's like not level? I don't know why. It's kind of interesting that it's like that. Um, it, yeah, his tail gets a little flat there, right? Like it somehow flattens out like a salamander, and there's a little muddiness here. 
Um, his feet aren't nearly as good. But uh, everything else is actually quite nice, like surprisingly. His wing even has a little texture here. It's not enough to even show when painted, per se. Like, um, like a, a wash won't catch on it or anything. But it's definitely there, and you can, you can see it and appreciate it, which is quite nice. And it looks like when that's on there, it actually fits pretty darn good. There's going to be a little bit of a, you know, a gap or whatever there. But either way, he's cool. If we get the, oh, here's the... The, the giant or whatever. So he's got a little bit of a, a sprue tag here, right? And the mold line going up kind of everywhere. Um, super muddy details here where it's kind of connected, right? And then his fingers just kind of like this whole part's melted essentially. Um, but that's on the bottom. On the top, this separation is actually, I think, quite nice and looks pretty darn good. There's not a lot of like gap filling there which is nice. And the base is just big enough for him, which looks to be kind of a theme. And then, yeah, some really bad kind of, oh gosh, I want to drop them. See, here's that weird kind of molding bit. I don't know what they did and how they molded these, um, but it's kind of odd that like, this whole piece, it's like this is the two halves and the halves don't line up, <laughs> right? Kind of interesting. Um, but again, like he's got a dimpled chin, he's got cheekbones, he's got like these forehead lines here. Um, uh, he got very thick brows and a, even like a, uh, a shaped nose. Really impressed with that, actually. That's pretty cool. Uh, now, see, this is a gargoyle to me, but, um, yeah, this guy's cool too. Again, you know, super melty in places, but you know what? All of these actually have some personality. What I like about this is that his base ends here. And so he's like way off center. And then he has like his whole hand here on this side of it. So it, it just kind of looks different and Then a little two here. I think like this needs to be trimmed too. I see there's probably a one here. There is kind of interesting how that, how that works. Um, okay. Here's like the chaos warrior kind of guy. Uh, the chainmail actually looks pretty decent. Uh, same with the skull printed on there. Uh, he's definitely got enlarged hands, right? And uh, very flat, flat, flat feet, <laughs> like comically flat, but um, you know, otherwise like this actually is not too bad. There's a little bit of a, you know, like this is the, the shape of this is weird, how it's kind of coming out. Uh, the, there's no real line defining the change or the difference here. And his weapon while straight is super thick. Like it's just all of it's thick. He's just a thick boy. And, uh, but the, I'm like, you hear that? That's actually pretty impressive. I dig it. There's a few of those. Here is one of the uh, heroes here. And again, actually, I think this looks pretty cool. So again, flat on the plane, right? So when you're printing it, it it's all one piece. Um, however, uh, you know, the, his sword looks super cool. Again, from the side, maybe not quite as much. It looks like it's just his uh, coat. There's no change in, in the sword part here, but love the cape. Like, I really like that. That would look great, you know, like a wash and a highlight. You can make these look pretty darn good. There's like a <laughs> some animal fur there um and actually really tiny hands here so if you notice the difference here in hands like there's a huge difference like this is true scale this is not heroic and because of that i mean they're too small so he while he has a thumb which is great his fingers are pretty much nil all right he's pretty much mitten hands he's like this um which is you know again for the time you know you got to keep that in mind too uh, Archer, uh, again, I like that. It would have been nice if they had had an arrow, you know, go in there. I've seen that done before. Uh, they would have had to probably gap fill it a little bit. But uh, uh, his face probably isn't quite as good as the others either. This is probably my least favorite hero so far. Uh, but, you know, still decent, still okay. The bow actually is quite sturdy, looks like, and quite good. And you can definitely tell he's the Archer which I think was one of the bars thing, right? He is obviously the archer and stuff like that. Now this guy broke off obviously, which is sad. I don't know where his other piece is. Hello, hello piece. Don't even know where it is. Could be anywhere. Um, uh, oh, geez, my goodness. Okay, so what's this guy doing? Um, he, oh, this must be like the thief or something like that, right? So he's got his arm there. Am I looking at, are these minis the right minis too? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see where the, um, where's the, the main guy? Where's Conan? 
There's a fire elemental. Looks like a fire elemental while I'm looking. <laughs> I love all those hands are in the air. Cool face though. I actually dig the face. Um, definitely not what I like. It almost looks like tree bark to me. Um, you definitely have to paint it like fire to make it look like fire. I feel. Yeah. So see, this is a different scale and everything. I, I'm. I was probably looking at the wrong. Look at that. There's like two different games in this box. <laughs> Uh, so this is cool. He's got a staff up here, um, a little, little laggy, but there you go. The skull, I think, looks very cool on there. His mouth is—he's got facial expression. His mouth is open. Um, he, you know, he's he's got his uh, eyes sculpted again, super tiny, but it's there. And then the same kind of cape, right? This kind of rounded cape um, that again I think would look really nice, um, you know, washed and highlighted and stuff like that. Actually, again, you can make these guys look pretty good, and it, it still always flat right not not like super dynamic like that like if we look at the the um the skeleton here same kind of thing right pretty much flat on there there is definitely some fill there but actually it hides it really well with this um pelvic bone uh quite nicely again enlarged hands enlarged feet um great facial features though i love it. he's got a little teeth there uh the mold line's not terrible either um very thick weapons that's still a thing very very thick but Either way, I think he looks super cool. And that explains why. Um, oh, no, because, so he has enlarged hands, but not to the same level. Like, if you look at the, the hand size, the enemies definitely have these thicker hands. Uh, let's look at the gargoyle. We gotta look at him. I oh, love it, look at him. Again, mouth open, arms out, uh, very T-pose-like, but he's like leading back, which is super cool. And his neck's jutted forward. It gives him a very unique look there. And the teeth, like are actually really well done. The, the, the tongue looks good on uh, the nostrils. He's got, again, eye sculpt texture on his armor. Uh, Chainmail looks good. This is probably my favorite so far. This is very smooth here and it's very kind of thick and silly up here. But everything else, I actually like the texture and the sword here. Super cool. I did that. And actually the mold lines are pretty darn minimal too. That is decent. I love it. <laughs> that is super cool. Um, here's a chair, or like a throne chair almost. That is. Here's a chest. Didn't get too many of those, but there's one there. Doesn't open drats. <laughs> and another chaos guy. You got quite a few of those. You get quite a few like repeats, right? As you're kind of going through. Uh, here's a mummy. So again, flat on the plane there. Kind of flat feet too, but the texture, the wrappings here. Like the facial features, okay, so sculpt design wise, they're not great, right? They're very kind of static and plain and on the X plane and all that kind of stuff, right? Or why, I don't even know which plane. I, I probably sound like an idiot, but you know what I mean. Like it's this flat, clamp the, the two halves together in the mold, fill it with uh, plastic and you're good to go. Um, but with that said, like oh, they all have their fingers and like the detail levels a lot better than I thought it would be. I, it really is. Here is... Uh, the zombie, I believe, is what this guy is, and he can actually use a weapon, apparently. Um, I like how his knees are together and his feet are kind of moved in like that. Um, there's, it looks like a little bit of a hole in this sculpt, which is kind of interesting. I haven't seen that before. Uh, so you got more skeletons. Oh, so many. Oh, yeah, here's the little little goblins. <laughs> Short little guys with the, the weapon as big as them. Um, he's smiling. He seems pretty happy. He's got his fist out on one and the you know the sword design at least is super cool i like how it's angled to make it look like it's a, a sharp blade if it's really thick and i love the like just kind of the fanciness of the weapons here now the weapons aren't super plain which could have been easily done uh here's whatever this guy is uh, i don't even know my goodness i think he's probably in the other game uh more chess Let's see what do we got here uh, some kind of weird skeleton thing. I think this is for the other game as well. Could be wrong, could be wrong. Um, again, I think other game here, but look at the, I mean, they had some cool minis back then. I would have been dorking out over this. Here's another rat. <laughs> uh, where are they here? Oh, here we go. Here's the heroes. They're in red. So here is Conan. I mean, the warrior. Um, <laughs> so I don't know, like his... His muscle structure seems a little odd to me. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, that's a big divot in his back. That's all I'm saying. Uh, sword nice and straight up, though. Very long, two-handed sword for sure. Muscles showing quite well. There's even a hint of, like, a vein 
uh, the hair, well, it's not a hair saw I choose, is textured. Again, eyebrows, lips, chin, nose, cheekbones, all of that's there. Actually quite impressed. And the detail level is, I think, really good too to paint, which is nice. So here's a dwarf. Much, well, look at the size difference there. That's funny. Here's the dwarf. Again, chainmail texture is great. The inlay of the axe is cool. These would look so cool painted. I really dig them. Moving right along, we got the elf with his kind of more fancy pose there. And he's got his arm out and everything. A little bit more action-y, I think, actually, than at least in the dwarf. And then finally, the wizard um, with looks like just a plain stuff with something on here and it broke off, probably. Um, and his facial feature is just complete dead. <laughs> like, I don't know what he's doing. Um, and uh, otherwise, though, I like the cape kind of flowing to the side. I think that's kind of cool. He's got these big mitten hands too, which is also kind of nice. All right, anything else? We've got orcs, uh, which again, just have this huge jawline that they were kind of known for. And the same kind of cut -of that I think they have to this day, actually. Let's see what else we got here. We got some cool other little minis here, but they're not from Hero Quest. <laughs> uh, here's this guy. Again, this is a different kind of weapon. Just cool. It's got a flail. Um, yeah, again, I don't know what that thing is, but that's a thing. <laughs> this. <laughs> this little... I don't know what's going on there. I don't like his nose at all. That freaks me out. Uh, and then there's the, their dwarf here. A different style of dwarf, obviously. And I want to say that is it. It looks like it to me. Anything else? No? Okay. All right. So there's one more thing. I'm going to actually dump this because I'm going to look at the back. Are you ready for it? Oh, there we go. There's my component drop for you guys. All right. Here it is. Let's uh, zoom back out so we can see. Enter the world of HeroQuest if you dare. It shows these three boys uh, like in a dungeon with the little screen there. So you're going to feel dungeons. But they have, uh, a this is like a full map. I don't know if I saw any like this, but they have all the different stuff on the table. Right, the cards here and the dice and, you know, all their, their people are spread out all over the place. Like it's, it's definitely not like a real quest, but it shows it off super well. And then it's, it's like no other game you've ever played. 14 different quests inside a new adventure. Each time you play, dimensional game board is filled with hidden doors, traps, treasures, monsters, and more. Look for more quests sold separately. It does have the game's workshop logo here. Uh, super cool. I dig it. I would have loved this as a kid. Okay, so what I want to know from you is should I actually try to play this and review it? Would you be interested in me, a uh, new gamer, reviewing Hero Quest from 1989? Let me know in the comments below. Seriously, I don't know what the desire is for that so if you don't tell me i won't do it um because <laughs> it's going to be some effort to uh you know really give this the, the the time it needs for a review of my style but if you guys want it you bet i will look into doing that so either way thanks so much for watching uh this crazy interesting uh unboxing is definitely different than anything i've done um definitely speed racer approved uh, and, uh, again, subscribe for more stuff, especially for my end of year stuff. I'm doing a ton of stuff end of year. So I'll be doing some top 10 lists, some game awards, game of the year will be listed, uh, upcoming 2021 Kickstarters. There's going to be a ton of gaming content coming up. Uh, I'm always excited for December for all of those unique videos that I do that time of year. So be on the lookout for that and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much on your way out. Leave a like and I'll talk to you soon.